post and everything. Ah, thank you, Nicole. This meeting is being recorded. If you did miss Nicole's um, announcement a little bit earlier, we're just going to be recording the first part. Um, and then once we get into the breakout rooms, it will not be recorded. But here is the rundown for the evening. Each of our candidates is going to give a two minute statement explaining why they're running why they're interested in all of that, give their story. And then we will go to the speed round questions. So um, I had a bit of feedback and um, was highly suggested that the speed round be shorter and the time with the candidates be longer, which makes a lot of sense. So with that, I'm basically using the speed round as a little bit of an icebreaker and hopefully kind of jog your guys' ideas on what you wanna ask about the candidates once you're actually in the room. And then whatever time we have left, I will divide it by, there are seven candidates here, we will divide it by seven and you will spend that amount of time in the breakout rooms with the candidates. Um, so I'll get more into the technical details of the breakout room and all how that techno technology is gonna work. But right now I wanna go ahead and get started here. So I'm gonna spotlight the first candidate who is John. John, are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay. Well, and thank Jeff you very much for hosting this uh, this great event, and it's a, an opportunity for all of us to uh, to come visit the thirty sixth, where uh, three of us live. So <laughs> it's not like we're we're all strangers. I'm running for the uh, conservation district uh, board because I noticed there was one thing missing, and that is a solid financial and management background on the board. Uh, they have some great conservationists, environmentalists, uh, people who, who really care and are connected to the community. But what they don't have is anyone who has experience in both public finance and environmental investing. Uh, when I ran for state treasurer back in 2016, two planks of my platform were creating a state bank and to make sure that we had environmental factors uh, in the decision-making process for our pension investments. Both of those things are happening right now. The Senate just last week passed a bill to create a public financial institution. And thanks to the work of the legislature and members of the legislature on the uh, pension board, we're now taking into consideration environmental, social, and governance factors in investments. The conservation district needs strong leadership. There's been some problems there with morale. They need someone with management background to go in. Now, I'm not just coming in to be an internal person. I'm focused outside as well. I believe what we need to do is to expand the district to include Federal Way, Enum, Claw, Milton, and Fife, get more revenue in from them, get more revenue from the, count, from the county and from the state to leverage our finances with private public partnerships. One of the things I've done throughout my career is develop partnerships that have leveraged resources, in many cases, very little, minimal resources. I want conservation education to be something that we do in every school district in King County, that we provide not only the education, but we provide internships. Am I being cut off or no? Sorry. Uh, so we have the ability to do internships and partnerships with the schools. I want yeah. to make sure we look at everything through a racial and social equity lens. Thank Every you aspect of our business from human resources to grants. That's it? That is it. Yes. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, okay. And now we will go. Let me remove the spotlight and we will start with Melissa. Thank you. I'm going to ask for a measure of grace from the audience this evening because I'm just coming off of general anesthesia from a procedure performed this afternoon. So I'm going to read my statement. Um, I wanted to share with you that I'm running for the KCD board because I want to be part of a team that guides in the hiring of the next executive director, helps formulate the next interlocal agreement and five-year program of work, and ensures the ratification of a union contract voted on by KCD staff. I also want to continue the equity and social justice work the district began in 2015 through the 2015-19 program of work, 
which ushered in programs like urban agriculture to increase food access and green infrastructure and deliver environmental education in underserved communities, along with urban forestry that works with member jurisdictions to maintain and improve tree canopy. By the way, at the end of the first program of work or the last program of work, KCD had worked with 31 of 34 member jurisdictions and their goal was 15. Since 2015, KCD has used King County's equity and social justice toolbox as a lens for allocating programs and services across the county. And since KCD is a countywide district, this is the most equitable guide rather than applying a single city's program across the 34 jurisdictions with varying demographics. KCD's advisory committee is the district's watchdog and they ensure that these principles are applied. Made up of city, county, landowner and agency representation, the advisory committee also has a seat appointed by King County to represent equity and social justice. Why am I qualified? I'm a farmer, a former KCD employee, and a community garden advocate that can bridge the county's rural and urban divide and bring value to the board. Thank you, Melissa. That was perfect timing. <laughs> I'm very glad you were able to join us today. All right, we will now pass it over to Brittany. Hi everyone, thanks for having me. My name is Brittany bush Bullet. I am a proud Democrat from here in the 36th where I live in a little house built with beams of dug fur with my husband, our dog, and my eight-year-old kiddo. I am elected PCO and I've served two terms on our executive board and in my day job I chair Sierra Club Seattle where I've spent years championing environmental causes and policy in Seattle and King County. I'd like to share with you quickly a few accomplishments that I'm proud of working inside and outside supporting frontline organizations and helping develop and pass Seattle's Green New Deal, leading the push for the strongest possible yes for transit levy in 2020 and helping you get past the ballot box with a nationwide record 81% support, and centering anti-racism work and equity perspectives in Sierra Club's work, including leading Seattle Group to be one of the first Sierra Club groups in the country to demand an end to over-policing. Now I'm excited to bring my experience and my knowledge to a new position where I can really use my understanding of how urban, suburban, and rural conservation issues connect. Some of my top priorities, strengthening relationships between the conservation district and frontline organizations that are already doing conservation and already working with the district, uh, especially in the South End. Growing the district's food programs and exploring how they can really be targeted to also be COVID relief, both economic and food insecurity can be combated with the food programs and supporting outreach and education on housing as a conservation strategy, allowing all types and prices of homes in all urban neighborhoods protects wild and farmed uh, lands from development and helps keep our air and our water clean by reducing driving. I have a strong set of endorsements, including King County Democrats, Seattle City Council members Tammy Morales, Teresa Mosqueda, Dan Strauss, and Andrew Lewis, Port Commissioner Ryan Calkins, Burien Deputy Mayor Crystal Marks, and former Mayor Mike McGinn, among others, and I thank you for your time and consideration. I really hope to earn your vote and look forward to talking to you this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brittany. Okay, and now we're going to go over to Kaylee. Hey, everybody. Uh, yeah, thank you again. This is a super fun uh, night, I think. Uh, Monday was really fun too, but I'm excited for this. So I'm Kaylee Clark, and I'm running for KCD. Um, really to kind of get back to my conservation roots and work. Uh, I've spent my entire career in public service with natural resources stewardship and conservation work. Um, I used to work for Department of Natural Resources where I was a wildland firefighter for eight years. So all over the Pacific Northwest. I started um, there running the inmate reforestation crews. So essentially any work that needed to be done that I could do with a crew of 10, we would do. Um, to bring conservation work back to the state. <clears throat> I used to help set policy at DNR as well and work in the forest practices program. So really kind of what makes me stand out is I do have the forestry, wildfire, um, conservation and natural resources background. I currently work at Sound Transit in emergency planning. And like I said, this would really give me a chance to kind of go back uh, to my conservation background and what I've done my entire career. 
So my three priorities are increasing awareness and outreach of KCD. So what is a conservation conservation district? Uh, what we what we do and how we can help you. Uh, I really want to help facilitate partnerships with some underserved communities and ensuring an equitable budget as well. So um, again, that across all of the jurisdictions, it's really being spent um, to the best that we can. I currently reside over on the east side in Sammamish here with my partner Liz, so I'm visiting you all from the 45th, and um, I would definitely love your vote, and I'm very excited to talk to you all, so thank you. Thank you very much. All right, we are going over to Doug now. Let's spotlight yes, you. thank you. Um, I started applying for this when I didn't know anybody else was going to run for this board. And I wanted to make sure at least one competent person. Now, it turns out all these candidates are competent. So voters can start looking at what extra does each candidate bring? I want to draw your attention to two of them, especially. If you're interested in the personnel problems that are going on among the employees, the morale problems there that are there's some indication of pretty severe morale problems. Melissa Tatro, I think, would be a good candidate to vote for because she's been a, she's worked for the district for five years and bring a information and attitudes and inside information to the board that it's very hard for other board members to bring. Big problem with this region faces is getting streams on farmland to have good salmon habitat. We have an expert here on that, Wayne um, Gulstad. He's a large property owner or farmer and he has allowed a large amount of salmon habitat restoration on his land. So on that issue, he can lead by example as well as by teaching. He a real good one. Now, when I asked Wayne if he'd mind if I mentioned his name like this, he said, no, well, nine, but throw your own name in there or somebody has something next to you. I'm a salmon habitat biologist. I worked for Fish and Wildlife for 17 years. I worked an oceanographer before that in NOAA for 20 years. Coast Guard officer and worked for the county as a senior ecologist. So I can bring a lot of um, good information about salmon habitat and ecological restoration of the board, if that's what you want. Thank you so much, Doug. Wonderful. Okay, next we have Natalie. Give me just a second to find her and spotlight her. There you are. All right, when you're ready. All righty. Hey, everybody. My name is Natalie Reber, and I live here in Belltown in the 36th Legislative District. It's great to see so many of you tonight. Many of you might recognize me from my work with the Democratic Party. I'm a proud PCO here in the 36th and have been here or in the 43rd for the last 20 years. I'm married and I feel very fortunate that my husband and I were lucky enough to travel to and from India last February before COVID set in. In addition to my Democratic Party work, I've been a part of Seattle's community garden called the Pea Patch for the last 18 years. And through our partner, Tilth, I've learned a tremendous amount about gardening, conservation, and one of my passions, soil. So my Passion can be broken down into two areas, and that's soil and trees. Healthy soil is the most important part of farming or any small crop cultivation, whether that's farming for market or growing cucumbers to jar at home. And it's also vital for healthy water conservation. The district provides guidance and resources for keeping your soil healthy, and I'd really like to see that program increased and expanded. Another of my passions is trees, and I'm committed to helping to increase and protect our current tree canopy throughout King County, and most importantly in the areas that have been identified by the important work of our tree census 
And they have indicated that our low income areas and areas in South King County have lost tree canopy and we do need to address that. I'd make sure every decision is run through the racial equity toolkit and that the board really uses and enhance that. I've served time on the Governor's Commission on Homelessness and the King County Women's Advisory Board. So I do have commission experience and I'd like to put that to use here. And it's just great to see so many of you here. I hope we have a record turnout. I know we're going to. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And last but certainly not least, we have Wayne. Wayne, just give me just a moment to spotlight you. All right, ready when you are. Thank you. Hi, my name is Wayne Golstad. Thank you, District 36 Dems for hosting. I'm running for the King Conservation District Board of Supervisors because I have tremendous respect for the organization, its mission and its people. I believe in supporting small farms, improving the environment and social justice. I've worked with King CD for 10 years, first as a client for their services on our farm near Duval. More recently as a colleague serving together on committees dealing with issues such as egg policy. I was raised in Seattle, went to Ingram High School, Edmonds Community College, University of Washington, where I got a Bachelor of Science degree in Forest Resource Management, and went back to school to get a master's degree in business at UCLA. I've had a variety of work experience, manufacturing, forestry research, high tech, and farming. I've been a janitor and I've been the CEO of a corporation. Along the way, I've served on several boards and committees. I've enjoyed it. And I've learned a lot about being an effective and useful board member. I like the work the district does, but here's a specific area I'd like to see them play a role. There's a difference in demographics between farm labor and farm ownership. The reality is people from disadvantaged backgrounds face greater barriers to ownership. KCD could play a role in knocking these barriers down. I hope you'll get a chance to ask me more about this. Can you count on me in the environment? You bet. Uh, Doug earlier, thank you, Doug, for mentioning the project we did at our farm. That was a collaborative issue between Sound Salmon Solutions, State Fish and Wildlife, Wild Fish Conservancy, King Conservation District, and King County Flood Control District. And my wife and I were awarded Sound Salmon Solutions Private Landowner of the Year Award in recognition for our efforts for the environment. So yes, you can count on me. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you to all of our candidates. Oh, my alarm's going off. You were just under time. <laughs> um, I'm going to switch it so we are all in gallery mode here. And let me pull up my questions. And I believe I can spotlight all of you. So I'm going to work on that now. All right. In the meantime, I would like to uh, give a special welcome to uh, King County Council Member Ginny Cole Wells, who's joined us this evening. Thank you for um, visiting with us tonight, council member. Did you want me to say something? Sure, if you'd like. Oh. Well, I'm Please, delighted to I'm be- I'm gonna take about a five minute break, if you don't mind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm delighted to be here. Uh, this is a very important election. And even though King Conservation District is not a part of King County government, I think it's really critical that people get out and vote for this position. I know that our budget, our excuse me, our elections director Julie Wise is trying to work on a perhaps a better way to work this election so that it goes out on a ballot because not that many people really know about this. I appreciate the 36 and the 46 districts for um, trying to get the word out, and my best to all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member. All right, well, thank you. We are now gonna get into the speed round couple questions here. And I would just like all of our candidates, if you go to the reaction section, you should be able to do like a, a thumbs up if you wanna do that to confirm you're all good with that process. There you go, we got Brittany, Wayne. Looking good. Fantastic. I think um, John was double booked, so I think he is doing that other thing. We're going to keep going the first couple of questions he can miss. So here's how we're going to, most of these are going to be yes, no. 
And then we're gonna have some kind of really short answer ones. And when we get to there, it's just gonna be enough so that people know kind of where you stand. And then once you get into the rooms, you can actually expand on it. So the first question, thumbs up for yes, nothing for no, is, is a hot dog a sandwich? I don't know if you've heard that question. Um, would you consider a hot dog a sandwich? Okay, we've, wow. We've got two here, Melissa and Doug say yes, a hot dog does count as a sandwich. They are on the record. So thank you very much. Um, the second question we have tonight is, do you consider yourself a Democrat? However you want to define that. All righty, thank you. Oh, and we got Wayne as well, thank you. Okay, the next question, should be pretty easy for this group is, is climate change the greatest threat facing our world today? All right, I think we're seeing a lot of thumbs up on that one. I am not surprised. Fantastic, thank you. And the next one, do you, thumbs up if you agree with this statement, um, there is no environmental justice without racial justice. Okay, see, very easy. Those are our speed questions. So real quick, I just want everyone to go and we'll do it in the same order that you guys are numbered. And I'm talking a sentence answer here. I think John is back with us. Hello, John. Back. All right, what we're doing here is we're gonna answer in 10 words or less. We're gonna start with you. What is your number one top priority first day on the commission, on the board of supervisors, excuse me. And that is going to you, John, answering, yes. Okay, sorry. Um, my, my first is, is to really get to know the board and get to know exactly what the uh, district does and what its needs are. I'm someone who believes in listening first and then talking. So Perfect. I wanna take, take my time and really get to understand what the issues are. Uh, Doug has alluded to the internal morale problems and some other issues. I wanna get to the bottom of those. I am a specialist in human resources. I'm a global professional in human resources. John, thank you so much. We're going to keep it very, very short. So I do appreciate you going in depth on that question, but that is perfect. And we're going to now go right ahead and we are going to have Melissa. Okay. Um, first off, I think John alluded to it is, you know, working with the board to get an executive director on board. Um, that's going to be really important because we need that leadership. Fantastic. I agree with that. Next is Brittany. I would have to agree that the first step is getting to know the board, the other board members and the staff and understanding the work that's already going on so that I know what my place in the work is. Fantastic. Um, Kaylee. Yeah, so who are we and what can we do for the constituents? Very nice, coming in with the shortest answer so far, love it. Um, Doug. Yes, the board, what's going on with this morale problem? What has been done so far about it? All right, Natalie. Yeah, how has COVID impacted the district and what are the plans specific to that for recovery? Very topical, and Wayne. I would agree that the first thing to do is listen and get to know people. Uh, board work is collaborative by nature. You need to trust each other. And so you get to get to know one another. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, and the next question is, if you could institute any policy that would be under, you know, the possibility of your role, but anything like that, what would it be? Again, 10 words or less. Policy would be to make sure we look at everything through a racial and social justice lens. Fantastic, Melissa. 
And, and knowing that that's already happening, there's always room for improvement. I would say one of the things that, you know, I come from a built environment background now. So how can we help promote cross laminated timber to help um, small stand forest lo uh, land owners uh, in thinning and um, forest recovery? Thank you. Next is Brittany. Sorry, my kid, I just got home from soccer practice. Um, I, I, would, um, I would emphasize an education, I would, I would um, I don't, sorry, I got distracted by my kiddo. I would uh, encourage an emphasis on educating and outreach on the importance of land use and specifically housing and how ha keeping housing in urban areas designed for housing protects wildlands and how both urban and agricultural land use are very dependent on each other. Thank you. Kaylee. Uh, I want to emphasize urban and rural forestry. So not only keeping the tree count up, but then also, you know, working on smoke management plan and what we can do to use Firewise USA and keeping everybody wildfire safe. Thank you, Doug. I would look into um, how well the ag um, drainage assistance program evaluates the effect on summer flow of streams. Natalie. Yeah, I am interested in looking at how the district can work with um, folks providing city and rural forest credits. Uh, for tree planting and what we can do as a district to promote that with a public private or public nonprofit partnership. All right, and Wayne. I would like to see the district do more to help farmers uh, adopt uh, sustainable farming methods so that King County can do its part in our national opportunity to reduce our, our, our carbon by 15%. Thank you. Okay, we have one more and thank you guys so much. Um, this was actually submitted to the chair, Nicole, um, from someone I'm not sure if they actually weren't able to come, but thank goodness we're recording, they'll be able to get their answer. Um, the question is, what is your program for conserving King County's remaining forest and waterways? And also, how do you pay for it? That's a big question, 15 words. I'll give you 15 words for that. <laughs> An extra five to pay. All right, next, first up, John. Well, I think I'll, I'll address the financial part first. I, I think that we've got to increase, increase financing from the legislature, from the county, and bringing in those cities I mentioned earlier uh, to, be, to be part of the district. That, that's number one. Um, so KCD is legislatively authorized to um, assess, or I guess it's not assess, uh, a rate of $15. Uh, currently, we're getting about $11.50. So increasing that. Uh, and then also just working through the programs that KCD already has in place, um, you know, just really uh, doubling down on those efforts of, you know, tree canopy in the urban area, working with small lots, uh, tree owner, tree stand owners, um, and, and then um, also through the storm, the stream restoration programs and getting those um, CREP dollars out there, getting all of the different programs, federal and state available out doing that work. Thank you, Brittany. Uh, with no um, legislative ability, the, the conservation district depends on outreach and on their choices in uh, grant money distribution. And so, you know, con concentrating both of those efforts in areas that are, that are uh, effective across a broad spectrum. Thank you. Kaylee? Yeah, well, I wish we could ask for some general funding from the state. Um, I think, you know, like Melissa said, really leveraging the programs that we already have. So again, increasing education and outreach. Um, maybe getting up to that $15 per parcel, um, but I really think it's, you know, what we have already, let's use it. Doug? For me, it's a landowner assistance program because it requires um, a technical plan for each resource problem on a land, whether it's a farm plan or a bank plan 
or forest plan. Thank you, and Natalie? Yeah, I think, you know, kind of what some of the other candidates have mentioned about bringing in all of our stakeholders and using education. One further thing I would say is that um, being good advocates, both with all of the governments that overlap, the state and all of the community groups and listening to their needs and being able to advocate for them in our positions. Thank you, and Wayne. I think probably one of the biggest opportunities we have is to improve uh, drainage in some of the farmland that is currently too wet, for example. That's a cost share type program. There would be grant funding available to for the match. So that possibly could be done with no, no effect on the budget. Thank you. I think those are all wonderful questions. And now we've gotten to the portion that I am most excited for is the breakout room. So Here's how it's gonna work. We, well, I'll see once we get there. I went ahead and assigned all of the voters into different rooms. In a minute, I'm gonna open the rooms and you should get a pop-up on your screen. And when you get a pop-up on that screen, you will say, go to the room. That is true for everyone but our candidates. Our candidates are gonna stay right where they are and not click anything. Um, once all the voters are in their room, I'm going to place candidates into their room and they'll be able to go and they'll speak. I am going to figure out how much time we have left and how many candidates we have. That's how much time we'll have in each of the rooms. I will send out a message when we're one minute away from the that time ending. Um, and then I'll send another message. Then all of the candidates will leave the room and then they'll come back here and then I'll put them in the next room and we'll just go around in a circle just like that. And that's why all the candidates have numbers so I can keep track of them. So thank you everyone. I really appreciate helping with this and going on this journey. So I'm going to open the rooms, everyone get ready, go to your breakout rooms, accept the candidates. <laughs> 